Good evening. I suppose there's not one person in a thousand in Great Britain today who is not familiar with the face and the voice of Johnny Darling. Uncrowned king of British popular music, television idol, and one of the biggest names in show business since the war. For almost one year now, Sunday night has been indisputably Johnny Darling night. The combination of warm, cockney humour and dazzling talents, this young man in the space of a few months has made himself almost unique in the annals of British show business history. Now, as you all probably know, Johnny walked out during the recording of one of his Sunday night television shows, and by so doing, created the greatest sensation since the Marie Celeste. Well, despite the fact that Johnny had only sung two of his songs in the show, the BBC has decided to let you see the last recorded moments in the career of Johnny Darling. Leading psychiatrist, police officials, and representatives of the BBC have watched the recording that you're about to see countless times in a vain effort to find a clue, a look, a frown, a gesture, something that will give them a lead to the question that everyone is asking today, where is Johnny Darling? Long 
for I is you and near me Give me that and you'll find that I will spend forever saying darling Oh, 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 what do you think you're doing? Who are you? Let's just say I'm a close friend. What do you want? Look at him. Herbert Nibbish, son of a Kennington bookmaker known to the world as Johnny Dodd. How old are you, Johnny? About 20 or 30. And there you stand, Herbert a monument to British popular music. Don't call me Herbert. <laughs> but you are a Herbert, a proper Herbert. <laughs> have you ever listened to your voice? Well, I have to, you know. It sounds like interference on a cheap Japanese pocket radio. <laughs> well, I've been trying to develop an individual sound man, you know. How long do you think this is going to last? Now, look, don't kid yourself, Herbert. One magic morning, you'll wake up and find the great British public have got themselves a new Johnny Darling, and you'll be... Just another Herbert Nibbish. And then it'll be goodbye, La Dolce Vita, and hello, Labour Exchange. <laughs> and what will be your epitaph? Here lies Herbert Nibbish, teenage idol, created 1961, destroyed 1962. Are you the fellow from This Is Your Life? <laughs> Have you ever thought of the influence you've got over the thousands of little darlings who buy your records? Yeah. Well, either you got it or you ain't. <laughs> That's not what I mean. You're in a position to set them a good example. I'm a singer, not a preacher. Do you ever read the papers, Herbert? No, my agent reads the papers. I, I only sign them. <laughs> Do you have any idea at all what's going on in the world? Of course I have. I'm not an idiot. I mean, Elvis has just agreed to lend the American government some more money. Um, Ellen Shapiro says she's going to retire soon and let a younger woman take her place. Uh, Adam Faith says he's seriously thinking of having his hair cut. Um, oh, yeah, Billy Fury's suing his tailor because his gold army trousers went rusty. Um, Do you know that a mass meeting of Indian astrologers have decided that the world is going to end in February? Oh, yeah, Lionel Bart and Alma, Alma Cogan said they're just good. February? <laughs> I'm making an LP in February. They have decided unanimously that the stars predict a world catastrophe sometime during February. You mean the end of the world? That's what they say. How do you know all this? We read it in the papers, remember? But you were too busy looking to see if there was something about you. But why aren't people doing anything about it? Why aren't you doing anything about it? What can I do about it? I'm a singer, not a politician. But if you really feel strongly about it, you can go and sit in Trafalgar Square. No, you go and sit in Trafalgar Square. <laughs> but you're joking, I'll get mobbed. Isn't there anything else I can do? The truth of the matter is, Herbert, you're a singer without a voice, in a career without a future, in a world without a hope. There isn't much time, Herbert. There isn't much time. There isn't much time. Light. It's magic Give me some light. Time. Bye. Two down and the wire up. Itch it. Right, two up, two down and an Elvis Presley. Itch it. Hmm. Right, two up, two down and a Johnny Darling. Itch it. Johnny Darling, why are you wearing your fan bracelet? Gone off film, didn't like his last record. Somewhere made in cane ankle chain instead. You still got your Tommy Steel compact? Who? Huh? Oh, no, I got rid of that when I threw a new Marty Ward eternity ring. Do you think Connie Francis, Francis will ever find true happiness? Dunno. Do you think Cliff and the Shadows will ever break up? I think I'd die if they did. Dunno. Do you think Ronnie Donegan's old man really is a dustman? <laughs> Do you read the papers? They say the world's gonna end in February. Right, two up, two down, the world's gonna end in February. It's here. <laughs> the world's gonna end. Don't 
you think it's all for the way the Abbey Brothers copy the Allisons? Well, they're all doing it now. Look at the way Frank Sinatra copies Matt Munro. <laughs> I don't believe it. I've just told you the world's been ending February and all you two can talk about is idiot singers. Right, two up, two down and an Anthony Newley. Hit it. <laughs> Goes the weasel. <laughs> right, two up, two down and Johnny Darling, right? Hit it. Do you think Johnny Darling will ever find true happiness? Not if he goes on copying Connie Francis. <laughs> Why, do you think people are getting tired of him? He didn't like his last record, saying just like Bing Crosby copying Michael Oddity. How long do you think he's got? Oh, I don't know, she's back in February, I suppose. Right, two up, two down, and a Jess Conrad. Hit it. Light! Do you think Cliff and the Shadows will ever break up? My name's Jim Hardy. <laughs> what are we gonna do now, Yogi? <laughs> I don't know, boo boo. <laughs> I don't think the Ranger's gonna like this boo boo. My old man's a policeman. That's nothing. Donny Donegan's old man's a dustman. <laughs> the world's going to end in February. And all you can do is talk about idiot singers. If Cliff and the Shadows ever did break up, I think I'd die. There isn't much time, Herbert. There isn't much time. There isn't much Shall time. Be calling me Herbert. <laughs> but you are a Herbert, darling. I'm not. I'm a Johnny, darling. Hello, baby. Did you get the flowers? Yes, darling, they were beautiful, but you shouldn't have. What about the bracelet? Does it fit? Oh, darling, it's beautiful, but you shouldn't have. What about last night? Oh, darling, it was beautiful, but you shouldn't have. You mustn't blame yourself. I'm not, darling, I'm blaming you. You mustn't blame me, either. No, you're right, darling, I do blame myself. You mustn't blame yourself. Blame it on the moon, peeping through the window. Blame it on my husband, peeping through the window. <laughs> Blaming on the intoxicating rhythm of the music. Oh, it couldn't have been that, darling. We only played your latest record. Oh, I see. <laughs> Maybe there was something in the wine. I meant to ask you about that. <laughs> Whatever it was, there was a touch of insanity about the evening. You're as funny on the stage as you are off it. I'm a singer, not an entertainer. I mean, I want to be an all-round entertainer, but I'm not a politician. What are I'm worried. <laughs> Nobody liked my last record. Well, that's nothing to worry about. It's not the end of the world. But it is. At least it will be in February. Oh, darling, I didn't know you read the papers. I'm not an idiot, you know. Of course you're not, darling. I know what's going on. Of course you do. I just wish I knew what was going on, that's all. Oh, well, darling, there's nothing we can do about it. And if we've got to go, we might as well go with a bang. It's Madison time! Right. Two up, two down, and my regards to your husband. Hit it. <laughs> Same right, time I tomorrow. I can't see her tomorrow. I've got an appointment with my wife. Oh, and tell Mr. Herbert Nevish I'll see him now. Yes, sir. Sir, so we'll see you now, Mr. Nevish. I suppose you're wondering why I've called you here tonight. Not at all, Mr. Nevish. Very good of you to spare me the time. It's about February, isn't it? Yes, that and my future. Well, if you invest your money wisely now, by February you won't have any future to worry about. Uh, I mean you won't have to worry about the future. Tell me, Mr. Nevish, how much do you earn a year? Oh, about 80 or 90,000. 
That includes my cigarette money. They've named this cigarette after me. It's called the Johnny Darling Health Cigarette. It's all cotton wool with a tobacco filter. <laughs> We've got this commercial that goes, hello, lung lovers, wherever you are. A wonderful idea. Do you mean it actually stops you getting lung cancer? Oh, no. But you get 40 fags for ninepence. The secretary's on the phone, sir. It's about the Commonwealth. We tell him not to sell it till I give him the word. Well, Mr. Plunge, have you decided to take the Herbert? Well, I don't know whether I should. You know, my records haven't been doing too well. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. It's the Chancellor of the Exchequer. He wants to know if it's true you're planning to devalue the pound. You tell him I haven't made up my mind yet, but when I do, he'll be the seven, eight, ninth person to know about it. <laughs> well, Mr. Mind, have you made up your Herbert yet? Well, you obviously know what you're talking about, sir, but, you know, show business is so uncertain. I mean, as soon as you turn around, there's another fellow on the scene, and before you know where you are, you don't know where you are. I'm so sorry to bother you, sir, but it's the Prime Minister again. I've told him you're busy, but he says it's very important. It's about tomorrow's Cabinet meeting. I'll tell him I'll try and be there by 10 o'clock, but if I can't make it there to start without me, I'll join them at the 19th hole. Oh. <laughs> tell the Foreign Secretary the clubs are in my locker. You see, Mr. Business, in my Herbert, it's just one damn nebbish after another. Now, let's say you earn 80,000 a year. Yeah. Well, we could start off by putting 10,000 in banks and HP. That's a very good source of income, I mean. 20,000 in aircraft. They're going up all the time. But I think we should steer clear of electricals. A friend of mine recently suffered a very nasty shock. And we should avoid foreign bonds. I don't think an Englishman should get himself tied up in foreign bonds. It makes for a very common market. Now, how do you feel about 2,000 in beer? It's always nice to have a little beer money, but we'll put nothing in oils unless they're originals, and we'll ignore tobaccos. They'll only go up in smoke. We'll sink 5,000 in shipping steel, 5,000 borrow, 5,000, 5,000 in Rhodesian mines, 5,000 in Rhodesian yours. Newspapers are booming, so we might get a free issue of two for one, tea for two, two for tea, me for you, you for me. Can't you see how happy we shall be? Yeah. <laughs> well, I won't keep you any longer, so I can see how busy you are. Take my advice, you'll buy British, embrace the common market, and go forward with the Commonwealth to a new era of Bob Hope and prosperity. Thank you, sir, very much. Oh, by the way, if you're looking for a reliable fallout shelter, I can get you one through the trade. A friend of mine's making a bomb out. Light! Give me some light! Why didn't you like my last record? How do you expect me to stay in the top 20 if you stop buying the records? All right. If you're so clever, what are you going to do about February? If there is a general election in February, the Socialists will win by an overwhelming majority. And there's nothing you can do about it. But we've never had it so good. Suez, Cyprus, Ghana, Congo, Cuba, Berlin, Laos. If you call that having it good, my old man is a dustman. <laughs> you leave Lonnie Donegan out of this. I've got enough trouble with Elvis Adam, Connie, Cliff, Ank, Jet and that lot as it is. We gave you nationalised railways. Yeah, and all the trains were late. We gave you nationalised road transport. And we gave it back again. We even nationalised. Steel. That's nothing to be proud of. Poor old Tom hasn't had an hit in the hip parade ever since. You get skill. will make the most wonderful Prime Minister this country's ever known. That jawline, that nose, those eyes, gazing firmly into the future as if to say, give us the tools and we will fight them on the beaches and in the fields of human conflict. Yeah, that's great. What do his eyes say about February? Well, I'm very glad you asked me about that, because as it happens, there are various schools of thought about this within the framework of the Labour Party. On the one hand, Michael, foot that is. Well, Michael feels we should row the boat ashore, whereas Hugh stepped out of a dream. Silverman and Crossman are all in favour of walking back to happiness, whereas Babs, Edith and I feel that when the girl in your arms is the girl in your heart. It's nationalised Madison time! Right, two up, two down, and I'm so glad I'm in Labour. Hit it! <laughs> Life. Life. <laughs> Life. Life to me is a great, big, beautiful, unmade double bed. No. Life to me is a journey through an endless desert. 
broken only by the intellectual oases of Picasso, Stravinsky, and Jerry Mulligan. <laughs> no. To me, is a magic land. But life can be a tragic land. Unless he's there to hold your hand. My darling, you must understand that that's the why he's got it planned. For he must know that love is grand. And we will wander hand in hand through heaven's deep. Life to me is the morning after taste of cheap Spanish burgundy on the lips of yesterday's woman. <laughs> no. Life to me is the sunshine of Proust breaking into the deep dungeons of Kafka. I knew an actor once. Was it twice? He stole all my makeup. Did he say anything about February? No. February to me is the shape of a mushroom. And a February mushroom is the shape of things to come. I'm not afraid of death. I was petrified when they broke up the Beaulieu Jazz Festival. <laughs> but I'm not afraid of death. <laughs> there isn't much time. Don't keep calling me over. The doctor will see you now, Mr. Herbert. Ah, oh, Mr. Darling, open your jacket, will you? How are we feeling today? Oh, we're fine, thanks. How are we? Oh, we're fine, too. Open wide. Ah, oh, splendid. You know, my young daughter thinks you're the cat's pyjamas. Oh. Turn around, will you, Mr. Darling? Yes, I think she's bought every record you've ever made. <clears throat> does this hurt? No. Has she got my latest? D, darling. How does it go? D, darling, I, angel. No, oh, oddly enough, yeah. that's the one record of yours that she doesn't like. <clears throat> are you regular, Mr. Darling? I was up until tea, darling. <laughs> Take a deep breath, will you? <clears throat> How's the uh, television show going? All oh, right, you know. Actually, I've been worried about my career lately. I think I've been overexposed. <laughs> Breathe out. Turn around. Back it up, will you? Deep breath. That's it. There isn't much time. There isn't much time. <laughs> You know, I think you've got a touch of February fever, young man. However, we'll soon put that right. Breathe out. I think I can arrange a private ward for you at St. Jocelyn's. I'll get Sir Harry Pilkington to go over you with a fine-tooth comb. He'll probably suggest that Sir John Daylight Robbery gives you a short course on the cardio vibraphone at Bart's. I didn't know he could play the vibraphone. <laughs> Who? Lionel Bart. <laughs> no, no, no. Bart's Hospital. I didn't know he had an hospital, either. <laughs> uh, Sir John will probably recommend a short holiday in the south of France, and if you can't go, he will. <laughs> that's Pilkington. No, that's daylight robbery. <laughs> After all, Mr. Darling, our health must come first. <laughs> uh, that's uh, not strictly true, of course. Our health comes second, my check comes first. <laughs> it's a good job I'm on the panel, really, isn't it? <laughs> you mean you're not a private patient? I mean, I'm on the panel. There's nothing wrong with you, my lad, that a box of aspirins can't put right. Take two up, two down, shake well before use. Hit it. Hey, hey, there, I'm looking for Piccadilly Circus. Will you please stop that infernal racket? Thank you. We in the Liberal Party are frequently and unjustly accused of having no alternative political policy to offer the country. This is nonsense. I can tell you here and now that we have several alternative political policies to offer the country. Yeah, yeah. For example, we believe in nuclear disarmament. No, darling, we said we didn't believe in nuclear disarmament unless the others do it too. Ah, oh, yes. We don't believe in nuclear disarmament, but we do believe in the common market. No, darling, remember we said we didn't believe in the common market unless it was allied to the Commonwealth. Here, here. There, there. 
<laughs> and furthermore, we believe in the United Nations. No, darling. Don't you remember? We decided to replace the United Nations with a world government. Ah, yes, of course. We believe in a world government. And the Liberal Party, looking fearlessly to neither the left nor the right, will continue to drive straight down the middle of the road. Here, here. Here, here. And in conclusion, let me remind you that Lloyd George knew my father, and father knew Lloyd George. <laughs> Pathetic, aren't they? No idea how to sell themselves. Oh, by the way, my name is Smooth. I represent the Plain Honest Truth Advertising Company. You know we are the big public relations people in this country. Oh, really? Well, we ought to be. After all, we put the present government in power. How can an advertising company do that? Well, we didn't actually put them there. No, you do that. Our job is to convince you that they're all a splendid bunch of chaps. All the people we represent are splendid chaps. Like yourself, for instance. But you don't represent me. Well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. The word on the grapevine is that you're not too happy about your career. Now, if we handled your account, I'd like to think that in 18 months, no, a year even, we could have the whole country darling conscious. We want everybody to think darling. You mean I've become a household name? Like a soap powder? Precisely, and that is where we of plain honest truth come into our own. By harnessing your self-potential to a nationwide blanket push, press-wise and TV-wise, we can create a talent think darling-wise, except, of course, in the hard sell zones where we might have some trouble sales resistance-wise, but we'd counter push with a blanket tour publicity-wise. You see, your sex potential makes you a very cushy sell teenage-wise and come to that middle-aged housewife-wise. What about February-wise? You mean enter the world-wise? Yes, wise. Well, astrology-wise, these Indians are wise guys. There but by harnessing much their star politics to their interplanetary there potential, isn't because of the position of Jupiter in relation to Mars and Uranus. And I say to you, brothers, down with Mars and up with Uranus. <laughs> Answer me this, brother. Why shouldn't we have a two-hour tea break when the capitalists are enjoying another record year of tax-free profits? But it isn't a record year. I can't give my last record away with a cup of Indian tea. Ah, oh, no, if you was to make that China tea. Me and my brothers would lift your record up into the top ten overnight. But I don't want to be top of the tea parade. I'm a singer, not a shop steward. Well, if you're not a shop steward, what are you doing on this picket? I don't know. <laughs> I'm worried about February. There isn't much time, Herbert. There isn't much time. And what do you know about February? Only fully paid members are supposed to know about February. There's no secret. Everybody knows about it. It's just that nobody's doing anything about it. Uh, you may think that nobody's doing anything about it, but they're already at headquarters. And if the Americans make one false move, we'll blow them all to kingdom come. And I say unto you, brethren, that the kingdom to come shall be the kingdom of heaven, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world of Herbert, the return of the prodigal. Tell me, my son, what is it that burdens your soul? Well, I know I'm selfish, sir, and a sinner, and I know you're busy, but I thought you might know something about February. Only the great architect knows what's going to happen in February. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 3. You see, my son, the good shepherd will bring his flock safely in from the stormy seas and anchor them in the harbor of the church. For I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. First book of Kings, chapter 22, verse 17. Will Johnny Darling ever get back into the top 20? Pop Music Gazette. October 14, page 6. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> Philippians, chapter 2, verse 12. Johnny Darling again refused Royal Command performance. Tim Pernelli Gazette, October 3, page 1. And it seemed to me I heard a voice that spoke to me from out of the wilderness saying, It's Madison time! And there shall come a host of angels. Two up, two down, and the Lord have mercy on your miserable soul, it is. <laughs> If there's a general election in February, the Conservatives will win by an overwhelming majority. This country's never had it so good. Ha! Elvis, Adam, Connie, Cliff, Hank, Jet, if you call that having it good, my old man's a shop steward. <laughs> Harold Macmillan is the greatest Prime Minister this country's had since Anthony Eden. <laughs> <laughs> that nose. 
Them eyes firmly fixed on the ball as if to say, If I'm not there by ten o'clock, tell them to start without me. <laughs> yeah, I know all that, but what do his eyes say about February? Look, old man, I've got a house, a car, a television, a washing machine, oh, and a wife and a couple of kids, all on the HP. So what do I care about February? I'm living on borrowed time anyway. Don't keep calling me February. I'm not an Herbert. I'm a darling. My sex potential makes me a very cushy cell, teenage-wise. Even if I have to give away a free packet of tea to everybody in the country. I'm not a singer. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I think there's no doubt that the accumulative effect of these problems has caused a partial, uh, what shall I say, collapse in that part of your mind that controls your nervous system and emotional reflexes. Now, I know nothing about show business myself, and apart from what you've told me, but I should have thought there would have been ample, what should I say, opportunity for you to work off these surplus, uh, what should I say, uh, tensions in a physical way. You mean like football? No, not exactly. <laughs> what should I say? I should have thought that a person in your position would have had plenty of chances to form purely physical, what should I say, <laughs> attachments with uh, members of the opposite uh, what shall I say? <laughs> Sex, uh, without fear of the normal recriminations. You mean like girls? I mean girls. I mean, they, they, they must flock around you, must they? Hmm? Pretty young girls, teenage fans, they, they surely they must flock around you. Tell me something. Uh, what are they like, all these, all these hundreds of pretty young girls? <laughs> They'll never leave you alone. You mustn't believe everything you read in the paper. <laughs> Anyway, that's not the point. Girls aren't my problem. Can you keep a secret? I find girls a terrible problem. <laughs> I'm mad about them. Do you know, for the last 15 years of my life, I've spent listening to people talking about the most intimate details of their love life, and frankly, I, I, I don't think I think I can take any more of it. <laughs> After all, you know, a man is only flesh and blood, and I don't think there's much doubt that the accumulative effect of these problems has caused the partial, what shall I say, Collapse, uh, temporary, of course, in that part of my mind which controls my nervous, my nervous system and emotional reflexes. It's really quite tell you. Hey, man, is this Leicester Square? No, it isn't. And don't keep calling me man. Why do you come here? Oh, well, well, you don't know, man, but I like it here. Why everyone is so friendly. Uh, hey, man, can you tell me where Leicester Square is? <laughs> I did do my national service. Oh, uh, why not? I was physically unfit. Well, it's a different life in the army today. There's a career for the soldier in the 60s. He's a man of action doing a real man's job in a highly skilled team. There could be a place for you, you know. If you feel you measure up to this life, just post off this free slip for a free booklet about careers in the new professional army. I could start a new life. Nobody would know. I'd be just another number. Private Herbert Nebish. Sailing and swimming in Cyprus. <laughs> Big game hunting in the Congo. Nightlife in Berlin. Oh, yes, there's a career for the soldier in the 60s. He's a man of action doing a real man's job in a highly skilled team. I wouldn't have to worry about anything anymore. Show business, politics, publicity, doctors. What about February? Yes, we're terribly worried about February. We don't like it at all. I mean, the last thing we want is a nuclear war. No, what we want is a real, honest-to-goodness, conventional war. And after all, what's the, what's the point of training a chap for five years if he's going to be blown to blazes with all the civilians in the first five minutes? At the mere press of a button. Light! Give me the light! Give him some light. Thank you. <laughs> but if once we lose this light, tis with us perpetual light. Ben Johnson said that over 300 years ago. In those days, we had to stand up and fight. Today, won't you join me?
How long do you think it will be before they pick you up? Uh, I don't think I can tell you that. You see, it varies. Sometimes I sit here for hours. But one must be philosophical about these things. I'm a good deal older than you are. Life has treated me well. And I have had my life. I am really sitting here for you. You see, it's for your generation to decide which is the more important. Who is to govern the world, or whether there'll be a world to govern. Are you going to walk today, sir, or shall I carry you? Oh, Constable, you're early. No, as it's such a fine afternoon, I think I'll walk. Prisoners will face the magistrate. Nothing to say. I have a great deal to say, men. As I've told you before, and no doubt will have to tell you again, I can hardly expect the law, which is blindfolded, to see what men with open eyes cannot. Seven days imprisonment. Next. Thank you. Unlike mankind, you see, I have no option. Name? Herbert Nevish. Johnny Darling. Uh, Herbert Nevish. Anything mm -hmm. now? It seems he's a singer who's fallen on hard times, ma'am. He says he wasn't part of the rally. He'd only stop to ask somebody for a light. Anything is there? Yes. It's Madison time. Quite. Two up, two down. Case dismissed. Hit it. <laughs> Darling, 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 I love you so well. Darling, 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 all I can do is sit and spell. Be darling, hey, all I ask really tell. Long for I is you and near me to give me that and you'll find. record, which I'm happy to say is doing very well because we're giving away a free packet of tea with every copy. <laughs> now I'd like to sing. I'd like to sing. I'd like to. But there isn't much time. There isn't much time. Well, there it is. Just two songs lasting five minutes. Not much to go on, is it? But that's all we have to help us solve this baffling puzzle. Where is Johnny Darling? Do you know? Good night. What do you think you're doing? Who are you? <laughs> Let's just say I'm a close friend. What, what do you want? Look at you. Riff Satchel Mall. BBC commentator <laughs> without a comment. Interviewer without a viewpoint. Go away. Let me alone. Let me alone. Go away. Go away. Let me alone. <laughs> You out of my mind. Darling, 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 I love you so well. Darling, 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 all I can do is sit and spell D. Darling, A, all I are really L. Long for I is you and near me. Give 
And you'll find that I will spend forever saying, darling, So well.